scalable, thousands of concurrent sessions. Hundreds of hosts can connect to the same object space. Terabytes of space, limited essentially by disk. Thousands of transactions per second. We have uh, one customer that regularly does 10,000 transactions per second on a very high-end expensive hardware, but uh, you can do it if you need to. Concurrency. Concurrency is a challenge and uh, something that needs to be supported. Multiple user sessions can be active, and each user can have multiple sessions, connections to the database that are each independent. You can have separate or shared namespaces on a per-user basis, and we'll discuss that. Changes to objects are committed in a transaction. Full transaction semantics, either all or none of it, is visible. Concurrency controls, locking for coordination between multiple sessions. User-based security so that it starts with a login. You need to be identified to the system with a user ID and password. There's namespaces, so what is visible to your session? What objects or globals are visible? Certain operations can be protected on um, a security basis. So only certain users have the rights to change passwords, administrative rights, to do a backup. Then, and the finest granularity for security is per object read and write security. So you can identify on an object by object basis what permissions are available, who can read, who can write this object. You can set up groups to allow for security. So extensive security capabilities. The object server is programmable in Smalltalk. Data definition, that is Smalltalk classes. No, no schema definition as we have in some other systems. Object manipulation, you're sending messages to objects. This is how you, can, you interact with the object server. Query facilities, you execute small talk code to select, reject, detect objects. Concurrency management. Small talk methods are available in the system to query who owns the lock, what other sessions are logged in, where is session, who, who is uh, logged in as session so and so. System management, doing backups and other things. Partitioning between the client and the server. There's a C API that is used to interact with Gemstone. API to log in, manipulate objects, send messages. There's a Java library that wraps the C library. So if you're writing in Java, you can communicate with Gemstone Smalltalk. But there's uh, most popular, most of gemstone systems are using the C, excuse me, are wrapping the C library with Smalltalk. So in VisualWorks and Visual A, VA Smalltalk from instantiations, you have the capability of loading a Smalltalk library that then provides transparent replication and synchronization. So that as you make modifications to objects in your Smalltalk image, in VisualWorks or in VA Smalltalk, those changes are replicated to the database. And when changes are made in the database, those changes will be reflected in your uh, local client library. Identity is preserved across multiple fetches. So if you happen to replicate the same object twice, it will have the same identity when it's loaded into your client Smalltalk environment. But in addition to these client systems, you can program directly in Gemstone using Gemstone Smalltalk. So you don't need to use a client.
client small talk to get to it. Now we've mentioned some limitations of traditional small talk where you need to fit inside RAM, there's only one VM, and the object state is not persistent. Well, with Gemstone, again, we're limited by the size of disk. You can have multiple sessions, and your view, the object space is shared amongst all the sessions, but your view is on a transactional basis and is isolated. So the point of your last commit or abort will give you your current view. And like traditional small talks, reachability from a root object. So when you attach an object to a persistent object, generally by adding it to an existing collection, then commit your transactions, it will now be visible to other sessions. So on commit, new and changed objects are visible. When the next session, when other sessions commit or abort, they will be able to see your changes. Now, when you have millions or billions of objects in your system, querying becomes important. So Gemstone supports indexes for unordered collections, sets, identity sets, bags, things like this you can create indexes. So for example, create equality index on, and then you can give a path to specify. This creates a B tree or uh, implementation, and the index maintenance is automatic. So adding or removing items from the collection, when you add an object to the collection, it will get indexed. If you modify an instance variable, on an object that's in an indexed collection. And if that instance variable participates in the index, then the index will be updated. So uh, you don't have to programmatically update indexes. Simply modifying an object and the index will be updated. Of course, indexes need querying capabilities. In Gemstone, there's a special syntax in addition to some message sending protocols. Um, so for example, I can say of a large set, select from each where the, each surname is Foster and each given name is James. And this will give me very quickly just the items in the larger collection that have small that meet this criteria. Now we're using a little bit of a different syntax here for those of you who are um, looking at the small talk. There is the curly braces is a syntax for this is to be used in queries over indexed collections in Gemstone. And also the dot notation is a reference to um, instance variables. So this is a special way of querying in Gemstone. You can also get a stream. So if you're not sure how many objects will meet the criteria, but you want to just start by looking at the first one, you can say select as stream from each, where each surname is greater than or equal to Foster. And that will get you immediately to the first one, and then each time you say next, it will give you another object from the collection using the index that you've specified. So we'll query things and get the results in a particular order. This particular um, protocol gives you very nice, uh, what we call VCR widgets, where you can click to start at the beginning, uh, next, next will give you another page. So when you're doing something like Google searches, you can say, look at the first page, the second page, the third page. And this, this is very, very fast queries because again, it's using B trees, so it can go straight to the, the correct point in the, in the list. 